Today we're going to look at the adaptable dashboard. Um, it's one of the UI components provided by Adaptable to help our users get more out of AG Grid. Um, this is a Adaptable documentation, docsadaptabletools.com. So let's have a look at the dashboard, which is in the UI components. Um, and firstly, what is the dashboard? So in fact, let's um, open up this demo to full screen and let's have a look at the code. So the dashboard is this area here above AG Grid. This is AG Grid here, and then this is the adaptable dashboard. Now, the first thing to say, of course, is that um, you don't have to use a dashboard at all. Um, you might want to use some of the other UI components adaptable provides, such as, for instance, the settings panel, which gives you access to everything inside adaptable, or you might want to use the adaptable tool panel, which again, um, has access to all the functionality available in adaptable. Or lastly, there is a um, adaptable status bar. The adaptable status bar sits inside AG Grid status bar. And again, you can use it to access anything you want in adaptable. But this is the dashboard and it's probably um, the most used, or one of the most used of our UI components. Um, and it's got um, really three main elements. We're going to look at them through this demo. The first are tabs, which are ways of showing different toolbars relevant to your application. The second is buttons, a nice way of easily accessing frequently used functionality and adaptable. So if you, if you use things fairly often, then you can um, uh, get to them through the dashboard. And in fact, you could also do um, custom buttons as we'll see later and finally the dashboard hosts the um, quick search functionality which we've looked at in other videos. Um, the dashboard itself as you can see it does take up some space that you can see this AG grid starts here then you've got all this screen estate taken up by the dashboard and there's various things you can do there's various modes you can do in the dashboard to um, limit screen state or manage it in different ways. So the first, of course, is that you can collapse. So whenever um, you have an open toolbar or an open tab rather, you can close it and then you just see um, the, what we call the dashboard header. Um, another thing you can do is actually go into what we call floating mode. So if you double click the header then you can see the dashboard, you can put it anywhere you want. You still have a, um, um, you can still use all the buttons. You can, all the buttons are still available. You can still use quick search, um, but obviously it's now taking up less space and you've got kind of full screen estate um, used just for AG Grid. And then obviously if you want to put it back, you can double click on it and it goes back into place. Um, you can, in fact, if you want, hide the dashboard altogether. You can do that in lots of different ways. But if you want to, you can, for instance, do it through the column menu. And again, the dashboard's gone and you can get it back again in different ways if you wanted to. So for instance, we could unhide it here and it comes back again. So that's the dashboard. Now what's inside it? Well, the first thing we're going to look at is tabs and toolbars. So if we go down to our code here, we can see that tabs and toolbars are provided in predefined configuration. This is the JSON that you as developers provide your adaptable users for first time use and which based on their entitlements, they can update. So in this example here, we've provided three tabs, one called search with three toolbars, as we can see. Um, one called edit with, again, um, these three toolbars and one called custom with these two toolbars. And obviously, as users, you can um, runtime users can manage that and provide their own. So, for instance, if I go into the dashboard, I can add export into this one. I could add layout into this one. And for instance, I can add cell summary into this one. I can even add another tab. Um, call it demo. And I can put, say, filter and alert into there and then there we are you can see we've got the extra things in here and then we've got demo with those and that obviously gets saved to your adaptable state and use the other thing which you can provide through your predefined config are module buttons 
module buttons, and uh, there's five here, which are these five here, are basically shortcuts to particular modules. By default, Adaptable just shows one module button, which is the settings panel, because that really gives you access to everything else in Adaptable. But if there's particular things you want to use, such as calculator columns, you can do that, and then it just makes it a bit easier to go to kind of that aspect of the settings panel. So these are buttons. Where the dashboard, of course, really comes um, into um, full power, and where it really gives you kind of the most benefit, is that as well as being able to use these um, toolbars, which are provided by Adaptable, Query, Export, Quick Search, and you saw the, uh, the list earlier, and these are useful because, of course, it becomes very easy to um, run any Adaptable functionality very quickly. So if I want to run a report, I can do that. Or if I want, say here, to switch layouts, or if I want to do a smart edit, then, you know, the, the uh, dashboard makes it very easy to do that. But um, let's close that. Where we really add value is with custom um, content. And you can see here, we have a custom tab with two toolbars, one called buttons, one called bespoke rendering. And in fact, we added cell summary earlier. So let's take that away. And there's two ways of adding um, custom content to a dashboard or a custom toolbar. One, and this one here is buttons, is simply you provide a list of buttons. So you can see here, we've provided um, a button. Um, no, we haven't got here. We have in this toolbar here, we've provided a toolbar called button toolbar, and it's got two, two buttons. The first, basically, as you can see, the label switches depending on what the theme is. We provide an on-click, we provide a style, and then in the second one is a smaller button where we show the current time, and you can see the adaptable provide you with all the context you need for on clicks for deciding what the label should say, whether the button is visible or disabled. So you can see here we can switch to the dark theme. Uh, and then if the dark theme is the light theme, then the title changes. And then obviously we can switch between them or we can show the current time, which we've done here as an adaptable toolbar. So these are buttons and they're very useful if you want to kind of, you know, give stuff for your users to kind of perform particular actions. But you can also provide your um, toolbar with totally custom content. So in this example here, we provided a toolbar called Bespoke Rendering. Now this is just a very small example where we've just provided a label, but let's exit full screen for a second. In the real world, let's go to the custom toolbars. In the real world, you would obviously want to give it much more powerful um, content. But more than that, if you're using one of the adaptable um, components, so if we go to the React component, you can see it's very easy for you to provide a fully React component. And then you kind of use it as we, what happens is you have what's called the framework component property. And then you can um, provide your toolbar as a full React component or if you're using Angular, then it's a Angular friendly template. And again, it's the same idea that you have framework component and then you provide what you need with your Angular ready code. Um, so that's custom content in the, um, in the dashboard. Let's go back to where we were. Let's go back to full screen. So, that's how you can provide custom content. And again, you can have as many toolbars as you want. The other type of custom content you can provide are buttons. And the difference between um, a button in a toolbar and a button in the dashboard, of course, is that the button in the dashboard is always there. Um, and you can see the code where we provided that here. It's also in dashboard options, um, but unlike toolbars, which are provided in the custom toolbars property, buttons are provided in the custom dashboard buttons. And you can see here, again, we've defined an adaptable button. You've got total cont um, control over the style, what happens when you click it, what the label can be. So these are more useful if you've got kind of, you know, a, your bucket, say, you know, suspend or move from market or stop pricing or something really uh, uh, um, important or urgent, or in fact, just a button 
that you always want to be visible because when you go into floating mode, that button is still there and is still available to be used. So this is the uh, adaptable dashboard with toolbars, buttons and uh, quick search, but it wouldn't be adaptable if you weren't able completely to configure it. And um, there's quite a few different things you can do um, to configure your dashboard, both at design time and runtime, to kind of um, have what you want. We've got a few here in this example. So if we open this example to full screen and we show the code, um, first thing we can see is that we can change the title. By default, if you don't provide a title, then the title that appears here is your adaptable ID. But here you can provide a title, which obviously means that you can change it depending on circumstances. The other couple of things we've done here is we provided an application icon. If you have an application icon provided in user interface options, then it will appear in the dashboard. In this case, it's here. And it will also appear in any notifications that your um, application raises. And if you're using OpenFin or Glue42 or Finsemble, then they will, um, that icon would also appear in their notifications as well. And the other two things we've done is we've said we don't want quick search. If you don't want to have the quick search running, then we've set the um, property show quick search in header to false. And now you can see there's no quick search. And finally, we've added we want the buttons to be on the left rather than on the right. So there we are. That's the adaptable dashboard. It's a nice, easy way of being able to access any functionality in adaptable in a safe, easy way. If it's taking up too much screen estate, you can either float it or you can hide it altogether and access adaptable functionality in other ways. As always, thanks for watching and any questions, please get in touch.